we should be able to get underway now. Is everybody here? I, I believe that everyone is good here. All right, well, <clears throat> good morning. Oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm sorry, we're waiting for one more board member. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Matt, did you see the final board member in the gas? Yes, I do. Um, she should be coming in to be a panelist now. She's in the audience. Okay, thank you. Good. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, good morning and welcome to the New York City Campaign Finance Board meeting for uh, February, 2022. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from the January 13th meeting. Uh, I move their approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, the next item on our agenda is my report. Uh, today we will be hearing from three campaigns from the 2017 election cycle, which will complete their post-election audit process. Last month, the CFB opened the registration process for the next round of New York City elections. Candidates may now register to participate in the citywide city council elections <laughs> that will be held in 2023 or in the full citywide election cycle in 2025 that covers all 59 New York City offices. The CFB's candidate services liaisons are standing by to help any prospective candidates navigate the registration process, visit our website to learn more. Uh, before turning it over to Amy Lopez for her report or her uh, 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 discussion of other work of the agency, I just would like to uh, correct an error uh, that we made in a, in a release yesterday. Um, before each of our meetings, our press office releases an agenda uh, for the meeting. Um, and by mistake yesterday, what went out uh, contained not merely the agenda, uh, but the proposed uh, or recommended uh, penalties uh, of our staff uh, based on the penalty uh, guidelines. Uh, the, uh, it should come as no surprise that our staff provides members of the board before each meeting uh, with memos containing their recommendations uh, regarding penalties. And of course, uh, the candidates who themselves are uh, participating in the hearings uh, have also received that memo and are aware of what our staff has recommended. Uh, but we do not ordinarily uh, and did not mean to yesterday uh, send out an agenda that uh, included those recommendations. They are, of course, only recommendations. Uh, the board uh, listens attentively at all of our hearings uh, and makes its own decisions about what uh, penalties, uh, what violations to find and what penalties uh, to impose. Uh, uh, and it does that, of course, uh, uh, based upon its own view of, uh, of the evidence, uh, taking into account uh, all that we hear at the end. I just wanted to correct that uh, inadvertent error from yesterday. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Amy, would you like to give your report, please? Thank you. Um, uh, my report is short. The uh, staff is getting ready for our voter engagement and outreach drive for the state elections that will be happening the primary in June and the uh, the uh, the general election in November uh, for statewide offices. Uh, also, uh, we have published online voter guide for the various special elections that are being held for uh, state offices, uh, for state legislative offices that have become vacant as um, state legislators have moved into uh, various other positions. So there'll be several special elections this spring um, and we will be producing a online voter guide for those elections. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, candidate appearances from three candidates today from the 2017 election cycle. Uh, in order on our agenda are uh, Dylan Schwartz, uh, Martha Speranza, uh, and Randy Abreu. 
Uh, and uh, so we'll take them in that order. And then uh, after their uh, presentations and questioning, uh, we'll uh, uh, take a break for deliberations. So the uh, first candidate scheduled to appear is uh, Dylan Schwartz. Uh, is Mr. Schwartz with us? Hi, Chair Chafer, it's um, Joseph Gallagher. I don't see uh, Mr. Schwartz yet in the participants. I've emailed him. He confirmed on Tuesday that he would be appearing. So maybe we can move on and see if he arrives late to the meeting. Right, that's here, fine. George, Joe. He's here, He's actually. Here? Yes. Oh, great. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, OK, uh, let's just uh, hold for a minute while Mr. Schwartz gets himself uh, into our screen, or at least we can hear him. Mr. Schwartz, are you there? I am. <clears throat> I am, Mr. Schaefer. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, uh, loud and clear. Um, so uh, our, the way we proceed is, is very straight uh, forward. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Gallagher of the CFB to just uh, briefly describe what the issues are that are before us today. It's not an argument. It's just a description teeing up the issues for us. I'll then give you a chance to make your presentation. Uh, Mr. Gallagher may want to respond. We may have some questions. It'll go back and forth for a little while and until uh, where everybody has said what needs to be said and asked what needs to be asked. And uh, that will be it. We'll hear from the other two candidates. Then we'll go into deliberations. Then we come back and deliver our decisions. All right. So, Mr. Gallagher, why don't you start by uh, telling us what the issues are before us? Thank you. Good morning, Chair Schaefer, members of the board, Executive Director Lowprest, and Mr. Schwartz. I'm Joseph Gallagher, Senior Counsel for the Campaign Finance Board, and appearing with me today is Victoria Telt, a Senior Auditor at the CFB. Before the board this morning is the matter of the Dylan Schwartz campaign in the 2017 general election for City Council District 51 in Staten Island. The campaign was a participant in the program and received public funds. CFB staff recommends that the board find the campaign committed the following eight violations of the act and board rules. Failing to provide bank and merchant account statements, filing late disclosure statements, failing to demonstrate compliance with subcontractor reporting and documentation requirements, accepting a contribution from an unregistered political committee, accepting over the limit contributions, converting campaign funds to a personal use, making impermissible post-election expenditures, and failing to respond to the initial documentation request and the draft audit report. CFB staff further recommends the board find the campaign must repay public funds. The campaign contests these violations and penalties and repayment obligation. The candidate is appearing today and the treasurer appeared at the January 13th, 2022 board meeting. Thank you, uh, Mr. Schwartz, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I believe uh, the statement that I provided in my exhibit should uh, give some context as to why uh, it, I was negligent in responding. I came to appear now uh, essentially to address what I could in the ways that I could. I recognize it's certainly uh, too little too late in that regard, but I came to take responsibility for what I was able to at this time and to provide anything I could to the board to ameliorate what might be possible. Just succinctly. All right, uh, Mr. Gallagher, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, not at this time. Um, I think the, the, the candidate's narrative is in the board uh, memo and, and in the exhibit. Um, I don't, we don't have much to add. Uh, any questions from board members? I have a question for the candidate. Um, I read the narrative and I understand that, but let me tell you what bothers me. Of course, sir. What bothers me is that from the get-go, neither you nor your first two treasurers considered it important enough to take any of the trainings that are uh, part of how you comport with our rules and requirements. Um, and you got $100,000. Yes, sir. And if you look at the repayment obligation, it looks like really virtually nothing was done. Put, put aside the delays after the fact, 
that virtually nothing was done to comply with any of the rules. So why didn't you do the training up front? Why didn't your first two treasurers do the training? My first treasurer had been a treasurer previously, as I recall, uh, in handling the campaign, the, the city public matching program. It's my understanding Mr. Asher had done it previously at the time. When we had moved on to our second treasurer, I had relied uh, I, I had relied on the management that I had selected to oversee that, and that was a failure in responsibility. At the end of the day, the buck stops with me, and I should have taken the training and made sure at the end of the day that it got done. I didn't. Any uh, other questions? Uh, Greg, uh, if you're speaking, you're... Uh... You're muted. Are you trying to say something? Yes, I am. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. I, so a significant portion of the uh, concern relates to three campaign workers yep. who were paid considerably less than their contracted amount. Um, can you address that and why you're un um, been unable to document or, or even provide adequate testimony to, to um, to explain why those those differences are not in fact in kind contributions to your campaign. They had, uh, so I, I can go through each. Um, I had worked previously with Ms. Dallin on a campaign uh, in Florida. Uh, she came up to work for me and decided to leave early. She quit early. Um, Mr. Gallagher um, also, uh, didn't finish out his contract. And if I recall, uh, Mr. Mecki uh, went on to law school. Uh, none of those three workers finished out their contracts as we had intended to through the campaign. And that's, that's why they weren't, didn't receive everything uh, because they didn't work the full time. Your treasurer in, in his appearance said that um, he provided you with all the documents related to the campaign in January of 2018. Uh, do you recall that? That is uh, inaccurate. You're saying he did not provide you with the documents? He did not provide me uh, with all the documents related to the campaign. Did they provide you with any of the documents? I have some documentation um, but it, it far from complete, uh, the most I have been able, to, uh, the largest, some of the documentation I've been able to obtain uh, as a copy of those bank records of how everything, uh, was spent in that way. And no, I don't have a full copy of, of all of the records. In fact, it was my understanding that Mr. Jerkowitz had a full copy of those records. What is your understanding based on that is to say, if he didn't provide you with complete records, there are two possibilities. One is that he had the complete records and withheld some from you. The other is that he never had the complete records, but he gave you what he had. What makes you say that he had the complete records? He had access to the he had access to the people he would have needed to have access to to obtain them. Uh, for example, uh, Martha Aon, who had served as the campaign manager, I believe had kept copies of contracts at the time. Mr. Jerkowitz had access to, to her and to perhaps you're right. Perhaps he did not have the entirety of the records. But alleged. also, wouldn't you have had access to the same people? Yes, I would have. Okay, okay. So I, 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 then that, I mean, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just trying no, to, and, I, I understand what it is you're saying. I, I'm not trying to argue either, sir. Um, okay. All right, any other further questions? If not, uh, Thank you for your appearance, Mr. Schwartz, and we're going to take this under deliberation after we uh, hear from the next candidate. Thank you. Uh, 
Our next candidate uh, scheduled to appear is Martha Speranza. Is Ms. Speranza uh, with us? And is there someone from the CFP staff who will be presenting? Uh, Mr. Gallagher, you're presenting on this. And, and I see uh, Ms. Speranza's name just popped up. And there you are. Very good. So Ms. Ms. Speranza, did you hear my uh, explanation of how we proceed uh, with Mr. Schwartz uh, about 10 minutes ago? I did, yes. And yeah. um, okay. Alex Robb is uh, counsel and he's joining as well. I mean, he's on the call. So if he could I see him. I see oh, okay. Him. Uh, all right. That that that's great. So I won't repeat what I said before. Uh, so, Mr. Gallagher, why don't you, uh, as I like to say, tee up the issues for us? Um, good morning again, Chair Schaefer. Um, today, uh, members of the board, Executive Director Lowprest, and Ms. Speranza and Mr. Rob. Again, I'm just Gallagher, Senior Counsel for the CFB, and with me today is Leandra Flores, an auditor at the CFB. Before the board this morning is the matter of the Martha Speranza campaign in the 2017 general election for city council district four in Manhattan. The campaign was a participant in the program and received public funds. CFB staff recommends that the board find the campaign committed the following nine violations of the act and board rules. Failing to provide bank statements, failing to report transactions, failing to demonstrate compliance with subcontractor reporting and documentation requirements, failing to document transactions, accepting contributions from corporations, li limited liability companies or partnerships, failing to demonstrate that spending was in furtherance of the campaign, making impermissible post-election expenditures, exceeding the expenditure limit, and failing to respond to the initial documentation request and draft audit report. CFB staff further recommends the board find the campaign must repay public funds. The campaign contests these violations and penalties and repayment obligation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so how do you want to proceed, uh, Ms. Speranza? Do you want to address this first or have Mr. Rabb speak? Uh, Mr. Rabb had a statement and then I will follow. Very good, thank you. Thank you, everyone, and good morning. Thanks for the opportunity to appear today. So uh, uh, as you know, I'm Alex Rabb. I'm counsel to Speranza 17, and uh, you've already uh, seen that uh, Martha Speranza is joining us as well. Uh, I'm available to answer any questions the board might have about the substance of the staff's recommended violations and penalties, uh, but with only a few exceptions, the committee's not contesting the staff's uh, substantive findings. Rather, the committee largely wishes to address the recommended penalties. Uh, specifically, Ms. Speranza is here to explain to you the circumstances that led to the campaign's failure to respond to the CFB's IDR and DAR, and the campaign's inability to provide full documentation uh, to address its apparent spending in excess of the applicable limits. Now, as you'll hear, Ms. Speranza was a first-time candidate with a campaign staff largely with committed part-time workers and volunteers. While the committee was scrupulous about remaining within spending limits and made good faith efforts to comply with the CFB process during the course of the campaign, it clearly fell short in making sure that contemporaneous documentation was sufficient to demonstrate the out-year primary and post-election nature of all expenditures. Now, as you'll hear, after a series of communications between the campaign's part-time campaign manager uh, after the election and the CFB that ended in the spring of 2018, uh, Ms. Speranza understood this campaign to be finished, and like many first-time candidates, she moved on. Uh, you'll hear from her about why the campaign didn't reply to the IDR and DAR and the difficulty the campaign faced in replying, and you'll also uh, hear her take full responsibility for, for these, uh, these failures. Before she speaks, I do want to address two items in the final recommendations. With respect to item one, the failure to provide a bank statement and a merchant account, um, the campaign has located the missing final bank statement. Uh, we don't expect that this will affect the board's final determination today, but we do hope to provide it just for the sake of the record. Um, with respect to the qualified expenditure deficit, the committee just notes that there is a, a finding about missing uh, uh, copies of canceled checks. And it's the committee's understanding that the bank statements do contain copies of all of those checks. And so we, we, we refer uh, the committee to, to, to those uh, bank statements that the, the committee has already, uh, excuse me, refer the board to the bank statements that the committee has already uh, provided. So um, I can take questions or uh, turn, turn to Ms. Speranza. 
Yeah, why don't we hear from Ms. Speranza and then when she is done, I'll ask Mr. Gallagher to address your last point about uh, what uh, the, the bank statements uh, do or don't show. Uh, uh, go ahead, Ms. Speranza, you're next. Uh, good morning, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, I'm here with counsel, as you just heard, who can respond to questions you have about specific substantive issues raised in the staff's findings and recommendations. I hope to address the penalties recommended by the staff for failing to respond to the initial documentation request in the draft audit report and the penalty of double uh, my campaign's apparent over the spending limit. Uh, prior to uh, my campaign, I worked in city government running Women Entrepreneurs New York City, a program housed at Small Business Services. When I launched my campaign in June of 2016, I left that job in order to comply with the city's ethics rules. And for the first and what I expect to be the last time in my life, I became a full-time candidate for office. By July 2016, I reached the fundraising cap and used the summer to build my campaign. With the exception of outside consultants and my former campaign attorney, my team was composed largely of people new to politics. My campaign manager throughout 2017 was a graduate student. My treasurer was a friend who volunteered to help me. Most of my team consisted of volunteers and ultimately more than 50 interns. We campaigned through the September 2017 primary, ultimately coming in second in a crowded field of nine candidates. Running for office was an extremely challenging experience. During the course of my campaign, I not only welcomed twins, but learned uh, my mother had terminal cancer and was given six months to live. Admittedly, after the campaign com concluded, I was consumed with care of my four month old children and my mother who passed away in March of 2018. However, I worked with the campaign manager for months following the primary loss. While she finished her last semester of school, she managed closing our accounts, returning $57,000 remaining in our campaign account to CFB, wrapping up documentation, and replying to outstanding correspondence with the campaign finance board. I truly and honestly believed that my obligations with respect to the campaign were over at that time, and as such, I did not log in to see access. I now understand that I missed many, many communications from Campaign Finance Board about this audit as a result. And I take full responsibility as I should have known what was required of me post-election. I also recognize that had I been proactive about checking the access, I would have been more likely to locate documentation necessary to demonstrate a relevant out-year primary related and post-election nature of expenditures in question. My campaign was careful to observe spending limits. I am confident that our apparent overspending is a result of documentation issues and not actual spending above the limits. When I learned of the audit of my campaign, I immediately hired counsel and we have tried to locate documentation and provide responses about my campaign that ended four and a half years ago. Together, we've combed through the campaign's records and have provided whatever documentation we can. I hope that the information we have provided demonstrates the good faith efforts my campaign made at the time to observe New York City's campaign finance laws. Again, I take full responsibility for missing countless inquiries from the campaign finance board and my failure to track down all of the documentation requested. Today, I hope the CFB understands this was a mistake from a first time candidate and not at all disregard for campaign finance law or an attempt to avoid post campaign obligations. I ask that you take this into account as you make your final determinations. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, Mr. Gallagher, would you like to respond? Uh, it, specifically to the, to the front and backs of canceled checks issue, if the board um, refers to exhibit four, you'll see the campaign, that is the um, bank reconciliation request uh, response that is exhibit four, and that includes bank statements from the campaign. Um, and you'll see that it doesn't include images of the front and backs of checks, but you will see that the cam provided, campaign provided those separately um, in addition to the bank statements for some transactions. Yet the, um, the total amount in the uh, expenditure sample report is the amounts that we don't have front and backs of canceled checks. Um, did you want to say anything more about that, Mr. Rapp? No. 
Okay. Um, so um, the the largest uh, um, penalty is uh, uh, exceeding the expenditure limit. Uh, I was wondering whether anybody wanted to address that in any more detail. I think I think Ms. Branza spoke to it that um, the 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 campaign was scrupulous about um, monitoring the limits. And I think when you read the report, you see that the problem we have is with documentation that there were uh, you know, for example, there was a, a campaign manager uh, who stayed on uh, post-election uh, and there wasn't uh, contemporaneous documentation of why she was there. Um, the, the uh, uh, Ms. Baranza has, has explained why she wasn't checking uh, C access and uh, you know, has, and has taken responsibility for that. And then has noted that, you know, she understands that had she been checking, uh, it would have been possible to pull together this, uh, this documentation sooner. So um, the, uh, uh, you know, while the campaign uh, is, you know, clearly doesn't have the documentation to contest the findings, uh, uh, of, of, of you know, going over the limit, the campaign does ask that you take into account its good faith efforts to comply during the campaign, uh, its acceptance of responsibility, and, uh, and uh, use whatever discretion you have to uh, lower the, the penalty, uh, which is currently two times the apparent overspending. Um, I have a question and it's a similar question I asked the last candidate and we'll because it's something that is a concern because one of the things you said is you didn't realize all your post-election obligations you got a hundred thousand dollars but why didn't neither you nor your treasurer took the three or four hours that would have been involved in doing the trainings because that, that that's of concern because that if you had done that you would have had a much better idea. So why didn't you or your treasurer, I know the campaign manager went, this, the student, but it's the treasurer and the, can, and the candidate who have responsibility for compliance. So what is your answer for that? Because that happened right up front. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, I should have. I, you know, I, 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 I don't know why I, uh, didn't participate in the training. Obviously, I was aware it was available. Um, I don't recall, uh, you know, my exact thinking at the time. Um, but there's no excuse. Obviously, um, it's a resource that's available to candidates, and to not have participated clearly um, is why I didn't have the information that um, that now has caused this, um, this situation. So um, my regret about that is, is tremendous. Um, it was uh, really, there's no, um, there's no excuse. I should have uh, done CFB training. And if I had, I um, certainly would have uh, understood my responsibilities. So, um, you know, I, yeah, there's, I accept full uh, responsibility for the failure to do so. Um, and, I, you know. Okay, I mean, yeah, but it, it was just you and, and the tra and the treasurer also did not do the training. Just. Okay, that, that's, my, that's my only question. Mr. Gallagher, uh, Ms. Peranza uh, indicated that her her failure to log into the, the CFP's system caused her to miss notice of a number of deadlines. Did we uh, send, if you know, uh, notice by any other means of those deadlines? Yes, by um, email, um, the same email that was finally responded to um, when the enforcement response deadline was uh, passed. Um, so the, the campaign services liaison um, contacted the camp campaign and uh, the candidate and the treasurer by direct email when the responses hadn't been received and also advised them that there was a post-election training that the campaign services unit conducts, which gives a overview of the post-election audit process. 
responded to by email. May I respond to that, please? It's my understanding that the, um, and this again is a, a failure of, of the campaign, that the previous notices went to uh, a campaign email that was no longer active and that the, the notice that, the, that Ms. Franz ultimately responded to went to a personal email. I'm not sure how that change happened. And Ms. Branza you know, can speak to this, uh, understands that, you know, again, had she taken the training, she would have known to update her email so that the, uh, with the CFB so that uh, those prior notices uh, would have gone to, her, you know, wouldn't have gone to the incorrect and defunct uh, email. Um, but I don't think that, uh, I, I, it's my understanding at least that those earlier notices did not go to the same Gmail Alex, account. No, yeah, the, the, the mailing address um, on the notices was uh, a dated uh, mailing address as I moved after the election. Um, the email um, that Mr. Gallagher has referenced um, was the same email. Oh, and, I apologize. Yeah, no, and I, you know, the the notice I got, the first one that I got, and I, you know, I obviously believe that it was, um, you know, earlier correspondence was directed to this email, whether it was a spam filter, I have no idea. But when I uh, got the notice about the audit, um, you know, I immediately reached out to Alex that was the first time I knew that the, this issue was, um, uh, you know, that the audit was happening, that this was um, uh, an issue. So, you know, the email was not changed. Um, I did not log into um, see access during that time for the, the four years following the campaign. I did not. And I, I apologize. I conflated the, mailing yeah. address issue with the email address. I, I take it back. Okay, we, we understand it was inadvertent. Um, any other questions? One thing, Chair Shavir, is that the, the, can, the treasurer did respond to the IDR saying we intend to respond to the IDR. And that was the last contact we received from the campaign um, until the enforcement notice was uh, response was due. So that was, I believe in March of 2018. Um, and I, I don't know, um, that did not, that communication did not make it to me, but obviously it is my responsibility as the candidate. So, you know, I acknowledge that, that is not, um, it's hundred percent on me. Um, but I wasn't aware until this past year. And as soon as I was aware, you know, I, got Alex involved. We have been, um, you know, doing our best to recover documentation um, that, you know, now is, you know, it's, it's four years later. Um, and so I realized that there are some uh, holes and again, acknowledge that that is my failure um, to have, uh, you know, not had all of those records available and that so much time had passed. All right, uh, well, thank you all very much for your appearance. Uh, we will uh, deliberate about this uh, shortly uh, and we'll move on to our uh, third candidate for this morning's hearing, uh, 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 Randy Abreu. Uh, is Mr. Abreu uh, uh, online? Yeah, I see his certainly, name now. Certainly in the uh, chat earlier. So. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, there, there he is. Thank you. And, Good morning. And uh, remind me who from the CFB staff is presenting. I will be doing it, Chair okay. Schiffer. Great. Uh, okay, so Mr. Abreu, did you hear the description I gave earlier about how we proceed? Or have you been watching this uh, hearing? Yes, Mr. Schaefer, and um, also joined by Council Sarah Steiner today. Terrific, uh, welcome. Uh, so uh, we'll tee up the issues first, and then give Mr. Abreu a chance to uh, uh, to uh, 
to make his presentation. Okay, so go ahead, Timothy. Sure. Good morning. Uh, my name is Timothy Judy, Associate Counsel for the CFB. Appearing with me today is Sonia Samoyes, an auditor for, at the CFB. Before the board this morning is the matter of the Randy Abreu campaign in the 2017 primary election for City Council, District 14 in the Bronx. The campaign was a participant in the program and received public funds. CFB staff recommends the board find that the campaign committed the following seven violations of the act and board rules, failing to demonstrate compliance with cash re receipts reporting and documentation requirements, filing a late disclosure statement, failing to report transactions in the in daily pre-election disclosure statements, failing to demonstrate compliance with subcontractor reporting and documentation requirements, failing to document transactions, making impermissible post-election expenditures, and failing to respond to the initial documentation request and draft audit report. CFB staff further recommends that the board find the campaign must repay public funds. The campaign contests some of these violations and penalties and the repayment obligation. Okay, uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Abreu. If uh, we can get Ms. Steiner logged yes, on. Yes, please. Yeah, there, um, yeah, there, there she is. Can you uh, hear me? Yes, yes. So okay, please. thank you very much. Um, I am here today to discuss Randy Abreu's failure really more than anything else to respond to the initial document and the draft audit report. Uh, and to tell you some things that are glossed over in the statement he previously meant, made to you, which are really, I think, important in understanding his situation. This is a first time candidate and he did in fact attend the training, uh, but his treasurer did not. And when his treasurer decided that he was more interested as perhaps he should have been in uh, his brand new family, that he, he had a, a child and uh, he became as busy as we know you did, you do under those circumstances, the treasurer slofted off to someone else in the campaign who started out getting everything together and then just also stopped. And Mr. Abreu in the meantime was trying to move forward with his life. And if had he understood what he was being asked, he might have gotten me or somebody else involved earlier, but here's what happened. You know that he broke his foot and he is still undergoing treatment for the damage to his foot. Uh, what you don't know is that he, he says in his statement that he went back to where he was staying in Washington, D.C. He had started to work in Washington, D.C., but he didn't have a home. He was, at the time, whether you want to call it undomiciled or couch surfing or whatever you want to call it, he had no stable residence, no place to live from reliably, and was now injured very severely. That caused him to focus on work and finding the place to sleep for the next night or two, all along when he was in Washington during that time. And then he talks about being hit on the head. Shortly after that, he was assaulted out of nowhere near Capitol Hill by a person with a large jagged rock who slammed it down on his head and but broke his head open, basically. Uh, he required much treatment, stitches, concussion, post-concussive syndrome aspects are all involved in this. And remember, he still had no stable place to live. He only had places where he could sleep set up now and then. And 
This is a very hard way to live and also comply with record keeping requirements. He also believed that the record keeping requirements were being handled by the people who he had trusted to handle them, and they were not. Then came COVID, and with his still shattered foot and his head injury and post-concussive syndrome, he made his way back to New York where he was able to stay with his mother. Uh, he also had at that point to start supporting his mother with a salary that didn't provide him enough to have a place to live on his own at all. COVID came, everything went to hell for all of us. It went to hell for him even more so. He never intended not to respond to the audit report. And yet he did not. Uh, he didn't know that for quite a while. Uh, he didn't get any physical letters from the campaign finance board because there was no address at which he could have received them. So I'm not really addressing here the violations of, with your uh, reasonable dollar fines. I'm addressing two things. One of them is the under the circumstances, excessive $21,249 for failing to respond to the reports, which I believe should be reduced significantly considering that there are only $700 of other violations. And it seems to me that as a matter of of law and equity and Rahmanas, you don't charge somebody, certainly under these circumstances, $20,000 and destroy a life that's beginning to be rebuilt. Uh, Mr. Abreu understands that there's some sort of fine that may be appropriate here, and I do as well. But I don't believe that under the circumstances, this is something that this board wants to do. The other thing I want to address just as a matter of explanation uh, is that one of the reasons that there's a public funds repayment, repayment is that I believe there were things missing from being turned in like literature, copies of literature. Uh, am I correct in that, uh, Mr. Jude? Yes, you are. Yes. And in terms of that, uh, Mr. Abreu was no longer carrying around his literature with him uh, in his life. And it probably was somewhere, but the best place to have gotten it from was the vendor who prepared the literature and, uh, you know, printed it, designed it, and so forth. But in reaching out to that vendor, the answer was, oh, gee whiz, we have a different designer than we did back when you were there. And the designer who left took everything that they did. So we're sorry, we just don't have it. So I understand and Mr. Abreu understands that he bears the ultimate responsibility for something like that. But I did just want to explain to you that there has been an attempt, and there's in fact an ongoing attempt, if it matters, to track down the literature for the campaign. Uh, I'll take any questions you may have now. Well, th those last two points are, are uh, very helpful. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll ask uh, if uh, Mr. Judy, if, if you'd like to respond uh, uh, to any of them. Um, no, I don't think so at this time. Well, Mr. Judy, then I, I'd like, because I, 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 since I like to be up front where I have an issue, um, on this last point, even apart from the campaign literature, uh, you have the campaign finance board has the invoices, canceled checks, the agreement. Is there any actual issue as to whether Red Horse Strategies was legitimately paid? 
I mean, Red Horse Strategies was legitimately paid. The question is, what, if anything, was printed and without copies of the literature? I understand, but if they were legitimately paid, I find it quite difficult to see why the, the board would uh, accept the recommendation to, to, to uh, uh, find not qualified 100% of these expenditures. It just seems quite excessive. I mean, when we lack the, the underlying literature, it's just impossible for us to know, again, what, if anything, was actually printed. So while there are invoices and there are payments, it's just not possible to know, know what literature was printed and whether it complied with things like the paid for by requirements. Um, and so that's why those, those sorts of expenditures can never be qualified without the underlying literature. Well, all right, we'll, we'll deal with that in deliberations. Uh, any other questions from members of the board? Um, if not, I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Abreu and Ms. Steiner and Mr. Judy for your appearance, and we will now uh, go into deliberations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too.
Okay, thank you. All right, are we all together again? Not quite, I don't think. Yes, we need, we're waiting for one board member. Remember. Actually, two. Just looking for for uh, board member Sproggins at this point. Yeah, I don't see, uh, oh, okay, I think we're all, okay. I, so we're working on an issue. Okay, we'll wait. It should only be a minute, a minute more.
Okay. Almost there. Great. All right, looks like we're all set. So the board has deliberated uh, with respect to the uh, candidates who appeared this morning uh, and uh, we're prepared to uh, vote. Um, so uh, I'm gonna make a motion that we uh, find the uh, uh, following violations and impose the following penalties and repayment obligations uh, with respect to each of them. First, uh, candidate uh, Dylan Schwartz, uh, a 2017 candidate for City Council District 51. Uh, the board uh, proposes to find the following violations and impose the following penalties. One, failing to provide bank and merchant account statements, $800. Two, filing late disclosure statements, $350. Three, failing to demonstrate compliance with subcontract reporting and documentation requirements, $100. Four, accepting a contribution from an unregistered political committee, $125. Five, accepting over the limit contributions, no violation. Six, converting campaign funds to personal use, violation, no penalty. Seven, making impermissible post-election expenditures, $1,189. Eight, failing to respond to the additional documentation request and draft audit report, $10,000. For total pen recommended penalties of $12,564. In addition, there is a public funds repayment uh, proposal of $94,737 for a total of penalties and repayment obligation of $107,301. Next candidate, uh, Martha Speranza, a 2017 candidate for city council district number four, board proposes to uh, find the following violations and impose the following penalties and repayment obligations. One, failing to provide bank statements, violation, no penalty. Two, failing to report transactions, $256. Three, failing to demonstrate compliance with subcontractor reporting and documentation requirements, $50. Four, failing to document transactions, $285. Five, accepting contributions from corporations, limited liability companies, or partnerships, $500. Six, failing to demonstrate that spending was in furtherance of the campaign, $6,286. Seven, making impermissible post-election expenditures, $913. Eight, exceeding the expenditure limit, $23,192, nine, failing to respond to the additional documentation request and draft audit report, $10,000, for total recommended penalties of $41,482, with a recommended public funds repayment of $36,672, or, and a total of penalties plus repayment, $78,154. Last candidate, Randy Abreu, 2017 candidate for City Council District 14. The board proposes uh, to find the following violations and impose the following penalties. One, failing to demonstrate compliance with cash receipts reporting and documentation requirements, $99. Two, filing a late disclosure statement, violation, no penalty. Three, failing to report transactions and daily pre-election disclosure statements, $250. Four, failing to demonstrate compliance with subcontractor reporting and documentation requirements, $50. Five, failing to document transactions, $50. Six, making impermissible post-election expenditures, $218. 
Seven, failing to respond to the initial documentation request and draft audit report, $5,000. Total recommended penalties, therefore, of $5,667. No recommended public funds repayment obligation. And so the total penalties is $5,667. Uh, that is, uh, I, I move the approval of those findings and penalties and repayment obligations. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. I think we have one more item on our agenda, and that is... Um, there was, uh, uh, a mo I think we need a motion to dismiss a complaint. Uh, Amy, you wanna uh, describe that for us, please? You're muted, Amy. Sorry about that. Um, uh, we received an anonymous complaint against the uh, Martha Speranza campaign. Um, after uh, our uh, investigation, the staff is recommending that the board dismiss that complaint. Uh, I move the uh, dismissal of that complaint. Is there a second? Second. And, and I should note that we've you know, seen the uh, write-up on that. Yes, uh, we, right. we have a report on that where we're, we've deliberated and are satisfied. Uh, uh, there is a second. All those in favor of dismissing the complaint? Uh, All right. Right. Opposed, abstentions, the motion carries. Uh, at this point, I will move that we go into an executive session. And since we have no further business to transact, uh, we'll adjourn directly from the executive session. Is there a second? Um, second. Excuse me, Chair Schaefer, can I just have, can, I, I sent you a message about something else. If you could just look at that for a second before we go into executive session. Uh, where is the message on <laughs> I, I, I email or chat? Right? I texted you a message. You texted me. Aha. Okay. Ah. Um, hold on. Um, so <laughs> I see your message, but it's a little bit oblique. Okay. Uh, okay. Tell me, so tell I, me so what I will just say. So, so I'll just have the issue that um, you know, Mr. Abreu had two uh 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 the staff had made recommendations for two possible reasons why Mr. Obreo would have a repayment obligation. One was the, uh, uh, I assume from the board's deliberations was the, uh, uh, the board decided there was no repayment obligation. Um, the other was regarding his final bank balance, which uh, uh, again, we have an old bank statement. So they're, you know, as, is custom, you know, the candidates provide the you know, most recent bank statements and have to repay the, the final bank balance that is remaining in their account. Um, so I, the board just needs to vote to approve that repayment Fair obligation. Enough. So I, I will amend our prior motion uh, and move that uh, uh, this, the, the Abreu campaign be obligated uh, to repay uh, its final bank balance. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. All right. Back to my motion to go in executive session and adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you all. Our business is completed for today. <laughs>